Hello there lovely people, my name is Sophia and welcome to another Sims 4 speed build. Today I am building again in Chestnut Ridge, the world that came with the Sims 4 Horse Ranch expansion pack. And this is going to be a two bedroom, I think three bathroom house for up to three Sims. And now, I know you might be thinking, this is an incredibly long video. And a pretty big house for it just to be two bedrooms and that's because it's actually a four bedroom house but two of the bedrooms are not decorated as such um, one of them is an office and one of them is a nectar room because the whole idea of this house was that I was gonna build a nectary as you might call it in the Sims so whoever lives here they like their nectar which is the Sims version of wine and there's a lot of outdoor space for them to garden, and there's also room for some chickens on the exterior of this lot. But the shape itself of the house is incredibly simple. Um, I don't know how you describe this, but when I was looking up reference images for more ranch style houses that would work in Chestnut Ridge, I kept seeing a few of these um, stilted ones. and. I didn't carry the stilts all the way underneath the house just because I feel like it can look a little weird and flat in The Sims and I don't know if that's how the houses are in real life, I have no idea. I live nowhere near a place that would have houses like this so I took some creative liberties on it but again this was just me playing around with the horse ranch pack. Um, I built my last build in this world ages ago, way back when the pack released, but this one was fairly recent. It was a big project to get finished, and I don't know, I had over five hours of footage for this build, and I underestimated how long it would take me to film this. And because I put the foundation so high on this build, you might see the camera pop up and down a little annoyingly throughout this video. Um, I tried to cut out as much as I could of all of the random jumping around and the camera freaking out, but it was giving me a bit of a headache. So you might see a bit of that here and I apologize, but most of this lot, well, the outdoor space is in the front of the lot. And I just wanted this to look like a really nice ranch opening and I used this flower decoration from Seasons on the ranch entryway, archway, I don't know what you'd call that, but I thought it fit perfectly and it really matched what I was going for here. The exterior of this house has a really strong orange color scheme purely because of that roof. That roof texture is from Island Living and I don't use it very often outside of Sulani, but I thought it worked perfectly here in Chestnut Ridge. I feel like the roof texture is from, what's it called? Oh goodness, what is that pack called? Other than Island Living, um, the werewolves roof texture is pretty good to use in this world as well. Um, but as you can see now, I am laying out the outdoor spaces and I used a lot of these live edit grapevines that are from Horse Ranch. And I surrounded both the garden section and the chicken section of the gardens in this and it was kind of finicky to lay out because it's a bit awkward to line them up perfectly so I didn't show all of it um this is me now cutting to finishing the second side but on here which is on the left when you first look at this lot this is going to be a outdoor hanging out space I get a barbecue here I get a table I get uh, what's that called? A bee box? A beehive, if you will? Um, and some chickens. So this is the place where your sims would hang out recreationally outdoors. Um, at least that's what I was thinking. I use these live edit low-lying fences from um, Jungle Adventure to line that out over there and we're gonna be popping back to decorate it in a moment. This is the garden portion where I imagine your sims would grow all of the plants they need to make nectar and I placed a nectar making station out here but other than all of the gardening spots there isn't really that much to do over here um, but now we've popped back to the decorative portion and this is pretty much the only landscaping I show in this video. There is a bit more of it but this video was getting way too long for my taste so I cut out quite a bit of it but you'll get to see me landscape this portion here 
and I end up using this pergola that came um, with a base game update. I believe it was the Hispanic Heritage update a few years ago now, and I love that pergola. I use it all the time, I always want to use it, and it just fit perfectly here to cover up like an outdoor dining space for the sims that live here, and I just think it looks really really cute. Um, for the landscaping, I used a whole bunch of stuff. I used plants from Strangerville, Island Living, Cottage Living, Base Game, just a really big mix of colors that I felt worked with the with the like foliage tones of this world because in The Sims 4, all the worlds, the greenery has a different undertone to it. The grass in Chestnut Ridge and the plants, for example, are more orange and yellow whereas in Brindleton Bay they have almost more of a blue hue so I used a whole bunch of different plants that I thought match the like color toning of the plants in this world if you get what I mean but over here I end up placing this well decoration which is from Get Famous it's one of the set objects and I just thought it looked really cool over there. Um, I think if I can remember to add lot traits to this lot, I'm probably going to add that one from Eco Lifestyle that's like natural well or something, just to, I don't know, give a reason for this little well being here. But as I mentioned before, this is where I get the bee box. I get a lot of decorations from the Greenhouse Haven kit because they work perfectly for this concept of a build, I suppose. I also ended up using basement treasures quite a bit, which always surprises me just how much I use that kit, and I love it dearly, but for this build I think I mostly used Horse Ranch, of course, Jungle Adventure, Cottage Living, and I'm not sure what else. There's, oh, Laundry Day for sure, I use lots of Laundry Day in this, and I'm just really happy with it, but I get a grill over here, which is another one of the objects from the Hispanic Heritage uh, update, which is so cute and I almost never get to use it when I'm not building in Selva Dorada or o Oasis Springs or anything, but I felt it fit Chestnut Ridge quite perfectly. And over here I end up getting an outdoor dining table, and when I was playtesting this I did have to turn it around a bit so that your sim can get past the wishing well. The well has a larger footprint than I realized, so I had to make a couple of adjustments to where things were to make sure this area was functional for your sims to access, but I get a lot of plants, I think I get a rug, yes from laundry day, I love those rugs, I would use them in all of my builds if I could, and then we're popping outside of the pergola where I think I end up getting a chair over here and I get of course the chicken coops, I think I end up changing the swatch of one of those off camera because, I don't know, I wanted a bit more color variation over here, but I get a toy box, I get a chair for the kid, um, probably a little rug underneath there too, one of the cute little horsey ones from Horse Ranch, and I just get a bin, and other things. I'm not sure just how much of this house I keep on camera because I've been editing this one for a few days and I don't really remember all of the calls that I made, so you'll have to forgive me if I am also a little confused as to what is coming next in this build, but I get a little bit more landscaping over by the chicken coop, um, purely for the reason like I like landscaping and I think it looks cool and I have a hard time stopping myself from over landscaping things. Because Chestnut Ridge is more of a desert world, it's more dry, but I can't help myself from adding plants absolutely everywhere because my landscaping is very over the top and I like it that way and I didn't feel like changing that. But you can have a lot of chickens over here. I added uh, gates to both this portion of the exterior as well as the gardening plot so you can lock your chickens in here if you don't want them running absolutely amok on your lot, because I know that can be kind of annoying. But at least because of the staircases, you won't have to worry about your chickens trying to get inside the house. I always have that problem where I know you can lock doors to keep certain animals and sims and stuff out of rooms in houses, but the doors always reset for me when I'm playing the game, like an actual gameplay. So the locks always reset, they never hold, and before I know it, my living room is filled with roosters. So I thought it would be good to add the gates just to make sure that if you didn't want the chickens running wild on the exterior, then they wouldn't give you any trouble. 
But over here, this is the, I don't know, grapevine portion of the build. I added some prairie grass in here because it's horse ranch and I think you can make nectar out of prairie grass if I'm not mistaken. It doesn't sell for very much, but you can still do it. My current household sim, uh, his name is Wyatt and he runs a nectary business, I should say. So I don't know, I've gotten more accustomed to the nectar gameplay in Horse Ranch and I've got to say I really do like it. And another thing I loved about this outdoor place is I added a sun bathing towel from Island Living under one of these beautiful wisteria trees and your sim can go under there and sunbathe and relax and I just thought that was so perfect and so cute and I really just, I loved that idea. I was so happy that I remembered that we have the sunbathing towels in The Sims 4. We got a couple with Island Living and I don't use them very much because they're more of a beach object and if I'm not building in Sulani, I most of the time don't think of a reason to use them. But it can be really nice for just a nice place for your Sims to relax outside. So I should try to include those more often. Anyways, we have moved onto the interior of this house and I will warn you right now, there is a lot of brown in this lot. Um, this is incredibly brown. It is overwhelmingly brown and I love it. Um, I don't often go this flat out with brown in The Sims 4 because I know it's not very popular with everyone, but I just thought it was perfect for this house in particular. I use this beautiful fireplace from Cottage Living and just a bunch of different things from different packs. I used these bookcases from werewolves um, in quite a few places in this house, so I guess maybe one of the sims that lives here is a bookworm or something. Um, I always use the randomized trait button when I'm playing the game, and more often than not my sims end up being bookworms, so I guess I'm just used to having houses full of books for my own sims, so it's kind of become a bad habit to add too many books into my builds, but I think they look nice, so it doesn't really um, matter in my opinion, but this living room is very cozy. I used a more unique combination of objects than I would normally. This love seat is from Nifty Knitting, for example, and I almost never use it. The coffee table is from high school years, and it's more modern than other things in this house, but I wanted to mix in a touch of modern things here and there because even though this is a very traditional house and I imagined it to be pretty old, um, it's definitely still in the modern day and the family that's living here has filled it with modern amenities like the big screen TV and I think we have nicer appliances in the kitchen and stuff and the bathrooms, um, which I liked. I thought it was interesting. Um, I used a lot of packs in this build though. I will warn you, um, this was not pack restricted in the slightest. There is so many packs being used in this house. So if you can't download this, I'm sorry, I'm gonna have to um, do a pack restricted build in the future. Uh, if you have any suggestions for that, I would much appreciate it because I don't know if you want to hear a... not hear see a base game build or a limited pack build or whatever and I do want to apologize if you hear snuffling noises in the background just now that is my dear sweet dog who has entered the room with a vengeance for snuffling and I don't want to restart this voiceover because this is a long one this is a half hour video I'm pretty sure which is nuts for me um I don't know, I don't remember what my longest speed build is, this one's definitely up there, and I did cut out quite a few things from this house, so you're only going to be seeing one bathroom, I don't show the upstairs hallway, um, and like I said earlier, I cut out some of the landscaping, and I also don't show the decorating of the enormous wraparound porch on this house. There is so much porch to be furnished in this lot and I was honestly running out of ideas so I did get I believe a woodworking table, a flower arranging table, um, just a lot of decorative items, a lot of benches, I got a chess table and a gaming table, I got all the tables your sims could possibly want out on the deck so I, I hope that was alright. I didn't really know what to do when it came to furnishing the porch 
Um, so if you have something that you want that I didn't find a space for in this house, you can definitely find it a spot on the wraparound porch. But over here is going to be where the dining table sits. There's a combined living and dining in here and then in that tiled section to the right there that's going to be the kitchen. So I wanted this house to have a mixture of being more closed off and a little bit open as if the family has maybe renovated the interior a little bit. So you have you have a very balanced floor plan I would believe but over here I use some chairs from werewolves and I think the dining table itself is from get together which I also use quite a lot of in this build and I thought it looked absolutely adorable um and over here by the entrance I just got some hanging clothes from horse ranch and just a few plants and an umbrella rack because I always have to place the umbrella rack it's one of those go-to items that I just need in a build. If I'm going to be using Seasons, I'm going to place an umbrella rack because your sims kind of need it. I don't think your sims can actually access it in the build, but you don't have to worry about that because as long as you can click on it and select your sims umbrellas, it doesn't matter if your sims can route to it or not. They will still change to their new umbrella, if that makes any sense. But I added a lot of clutter into this house, which is part of why it took so long to furnish I think um it's an expensive house um I don't remember the exact cost but it's way over a hundred thousand potentially two hundred thousand because it is a large lot there's lots of items on it and some of them are kind of expensive um I didn't think too much of the price while I was building this. I don't normally do that when I'm furnishing my builds. I don't like furnishing on a budget. Um, you won't catch me building any starter homes anytime soon, um, if you know what I mean. So this home is a bit more expensive. My dear dog, what are you doing? I apologize for my dog. <laughs> I feel like every time I do a voiceover, there's always one of my animals that comes and crashes the party. And I try to keep them away, but they, I have real Houdinis of animals and they have learned how to open doors and such and climb through windows in terms of my cat that they shouldn't be able to climb into. So it is harder than you would think to keep them away <laughs> while I'm doing a voiceover. So I really hope you don't mind too much. I hope you couldn't hear him, but I think you would. I have loud animals, man. Probably next minute my cat's gonna come screaming into the room. <laughs> but anyways, over here I ended up placing a bar. And this bar is from the Modern Luxe kit. I just really like the swatches of it. I'm not a huge fan of a lot of the bars that we have in The Sims 4. They're either too large for the spaces I want to use them in, or they don't really have a style or the swatches that I want to use in the moment, but I feel like this bar was perfect. It was just a added modern touch to the house that fit in perfectly with the color scheme and the desert theme of the neighborhood that this house is placed in. And I don't know if I mentioned where this is. I'm pretty sure this is the Riders Glen neighborhood in Chestnut Ridge. It is the more rural one. It's the greener rural one because there's three neighborhoods. There's the town center, there's Galloping Gulch with like three lots in it, and then there's this one, which is Riders Glen. Um, so it's over there if you were wondering where it was, if you're curious about anything about the lot. Uh, I have all that information in the description, um, including the price of the lot in case you want to know truly how expensive this one is. Um, but yeah, this is the kitchen. It's a big one, and I kind of struggled with laying it out for a minute. I especially struggle with islands in The Sims 4 because... I feel like they either look too big or too small and it's hard to combine the actual island counters with the normal counters and it gave me a bit of a headache but oh look at me saying that my kitchen has more modern appliances and I use the literal rustic wooden fridge from um what pack is that from cottage living but I did end up using more modern sinks and potentially a modern oven yes uh I think this one is from Snowy Escape, and I ended up merging in a different regular counter behind it, and I didn't like how you could tell there was one there, so I changed the color to make it look 
more purposeful. Like there's just a different colored slab of stone behind the stove on the island. And I'm really happy with how that looked. Uh, I always struggle with placing stoves or ovens or whatever you want to call them that aren't the dream home decorator separated ones on islands because they both need to not have a backsplash that sticks upwards but they there's also the issue of them sitting flush against the counters themselves and i always have a headache doing that but i think this solution might be one i do more often where i just merge a different counter in and maybe change the color so it looks like i don't know a cool little accent piece of the tabletop but in this kitchen i get tons of clutter i get some baked goods um i get some books of course a few urn pieces or vases from base game um there's also a coffee pot and a microwave just a few actually functional objects to place into this kitchen um and there's lots of open counters uh I made sure this counter in particular near the fridge was empty because I forgot that there's an island so your sims have no problem with having as many counters as they need to prep food so you can easily do the cooking together interaction with as many sims as you want honestly. Um, I really only place clutter centrally on islands because I feel like it looks more purposeful so there are tons of available counters in this kitchen. One struggle I had with this build is that because this is such a boxy house, the windows are only on the outside of the home, which means there's large stretches of walls that have absolutely no windows in multiple rooms, which I feel like is realistic for a house of this size. Honestly, this one, or this style, I should say, I feel like this one actually has too many windows to be more realistic, but it's The Sims and I love windows, so I don't really mind. Uh, but yeah, it w made it kind of hard to decorate the walls in some of the rooms because there's just so many that don't have windows on them. So I ended up using a lot of wall decorations in this. I used the shelving unit from Laundry Day. Um, I get a lot of the paintings from both Strangerville and Horse Ranch as well. Uh, just a lot of wall decorations because I hate empty walls in The Sims. I hate when I go and take a screenshot in The Sims and the wall is just flat and empty so i try to make sure there's a decoration tastefully somewhere and everywhere you could theoretically take a screenshot in my houses because i'm a screenshot simmer do i ever use them for anything no but it's nice to look back on them sometimes so i'm always i don't know conscious of the backgrounds whenever i build houses especially if i'm going to be using them in my own gameplay but in this kitchen there's just the basic items really there's a few chairs at the island there's um what was that there was a storage box from um horse ranch over here and this is where i'm cluttering up the island um i kept in a lot of the cluttering in this video uh at least in the places i was really happy with it so you get to see me clutter this kitchen but upstairs in the office i think i cut out a bit of the desk cluttering up there just because I know it can get repetitive and not everyone's interested in watching me clutter up a space crazily so I kept it in for some rooms and for others I didn't um, but you'll have to let me know what you think about that. Uh, in here this is one of the potential bedrooms. Uh, this is the nectar room on the inside of the house so that I don't know if it's raining or thunderstorming your sims can still make some money and make some nectar. Um, I made a little wardrobe of sorts for the wine storage racks that came with horse ranch i love those um i don't think your sims will be able to actually access them in there i think it's too tight of a squeeze but you can certainly access them in there and originally when i started playing with the nectar in the sims 4 i was thinking that ah oh, i won't need all that many nectar racks to store my sims well wine because I didn't think my sims would make very much of it as fast as they do but my singular sim he has filled up a good 10 worth of wine racks and I play on the normal lifespan too so he is just going for it so I thought that in this house I'd give you as many nectar storage spots as I could just because it's better to have too many than too little in my experience anyways this is one of the three bathrooms there are two down here 
One of them is an ensuite, which I don't show on camera, and the ch chids, no, the kids' bedroom upstairs also has an ensuite, which is incredibly large because the upstairs floor plan was interesting, to say the least. I don't think I mentioned specifically the family I built this house for. I built it for up to two parents and then a child, uh, but you can of course have whoever you want here and you can easily add another two bedrooms into this house like I said because there's the nectar room down here and then there's the office upstairs and there's just plenty of room to customize this house to whatever you want because it's very large. I only decorated it as a two bedroom because of the things I wanted to include. Obviously I wanted a nectar room and I thought it would be nice to have an office imagining that the sims who live here run their own business or something so you can easily change these rooms into whatever you want them to be, but this is the master bedroom. It is on the ground floor and it has that ensuite there. The bathrooms are pretty close to each other and I really like that. I feel like it's efficient for gameplay. Um, you can see where everything is and I feel like this house is pretty easy to navigate on the downstairs especially. Um, when we get upstairs, the roof gives a little bit of a headache for the camera up there, but if you have the walls in half up mode, really all bugginess and annoying things disappear, so it's really not a headache to play in this house for gameplay. I didn't have much trouble when I was playtesting it, but I was thinking though when I was actually building this house that because I gave the house such a massive orange tin roof, I can only imagine how hot the upper floor gets in the Chestnut Ridge summers. I can imagine it would be an incredibly sweaty place to be. But thankfully in The Sims, roofs don't work like that. If it's hot anywhere in the house, it'll be hot in all the other rooms, so it doesn't matter. But while I was decorating this, I was just thinking of how stuffy it would get up there in the summers. But anyways. I added a TV in the master bedroom because it's a pretty big one. Um, the bedroom, that is. This is a small old TV from Basement Treasures. Um, and I didn't feel the need to add any activities into the master bedroom other than, of course, that um, TV. And, of course, a laundry hamper because this house does have laundry. Because the rest of this lot is filled with all the skill building items you could want. I didn't need a desk in here because we have an office and... Yeah, I was struggling to figure out what to even put in here, so I get your dresser, of course, I get some mirrors, side tables, plants, all of my go-to decorations for any room, really, but I also show the cluttering of this room because I just thought it was really cute. I like watching people clutter things up in The Sims, but I understand that it can be a little boring for some people, so I try not to include it throughout the whole video if the video is getting a little bit long but anyways I think we'll be popping up to the office in a moment yes I did mention earlier that I cut out the upstairs landing there's just some bookcases and a side table there as well as a fireplace and a rocking chair nothing too interesting or crucial but this is going to be the office I designed this as an office for two sims to work in comfortably so there are two computers, there's one over here on these counter pieces, um, which as you can see here I cut out the cluttering of for this one just because I felt like you'd seen enough of my cluttering in this uh, video. But there's also a another desk which has a actual desktop PC on it. I get another chess table in here even though there's one downstairs because I felt like it would be nice to have a chess table in an office. Um, the logic skill is a pretty blanket skill that a lot of sims end up needing um, in gameplay, so when possible and it doesn't feel too out of character for a house, I do like to have either a gaming table or a chess table, purely because they're so useful. And I hate loading screens in The Sims, so I really don't want to have to take them to the park or the library every time I want them to complete an aspiration or, I don't know, promotion requirement in the game, so it was nice to have plenty of space to add those critical activities, I would say, in this home. But other than that, that's about it for this office. There's the two desks and the chess table and that's it. I don't even think I had a bookcase in here. But oh, I did add a fish tank, which is so cute. I used this one from Snowy Escape 
and I thought it was adorable. I like adding the fish tanks every now and again because, I don't know, they add some life into your builds because uh, your sins can actually buy fish to put in there or they can fish them up from the locations in the actual game and then place them in, which is unusual, but still kind of funny. So sometimes it's nice to have a random gummy fish swimming around in your um, Sims houses, but anyways. This is the child's bedroom. I used a couple of these beds from Horse Ranch and I merged them together to create a kind of twin bed look. Um, I don't normally do this because most of the time I don't like how this looks in game, but I really, really, really wanted to use this bed and there wasn't a double bed version with this swatch. So I used this one here and I thought it paired absolutely perfectly with the set of paintings from Seasons. You can't tell me that both the color scheme and the subject of this painting aren't absolutely perfect for this bedroom in this house. It just, it was so good. It made me so happy that I matched that bed to that painting. And I know it's a very small thing, or a very simple thing, but I don't know, it brought me a lot of happiness. And I really like this bedroom because of it. I imagine that the child sim who lives in here, I was thinking it was a girl, but this can be for anyone. Um, I imagine they really like animals, they really love the outdoors, and chess. I think they are the main user of the chess tables in this house, so a nice little well-rounded kid, if you know what I'm saying. Um, I like to just decorate for kids with big personalities, which is why my kids' rooms often end up being so, like, sickeningly colorful <laughs> like this is a very bright room i use lots of yellows lots of pinks oranges greens it's it's so colorful and i just love how it looks the sim has an unusually shaped bedroom as you might have noticed um and they have a little playroom offshoot to which you can see through that archway there where i end up giving them a desk a puppet theater i give them a creativity table and a doll's house, a giant stuffed animal. That's where all of the activities are for this child in their bedroom. And I thought it was really nice. Uh, I needed to have a weirdly L-shaped bedroom in here. Otherwise, the room wouldn't have had any windows, which is not something I like to do in my builds very often. I feel like it can't be a bedroom if it doesn't have windows. And while this, this room is certainly pushing it, there is technically a window in this bedroom, um, which is fine. And over there in that tiled bit, you can see that's where the ensuite for this kid ends up being. It's enormous. It's as big as the office, but I liked it. It ends up having a separate shower and tub. It has a toilet, double sink, and pretty basic bathroom stuff. I decorated it more for a child, so there's some really cute um, decals in there and such, but... I don't show it on camera because bathrooms are boring, but this is the uh, the kids' playroom or the extension of their bedroom, if you will. Over here, I put so much clutter. It's very pink, it's very cramped, and I think it is precious. And it looks very busy, but my tester child sim could use everything without any hassle. There's friendship bracelets, and like I said, that puppet theater, which is a large item, but my sim could use that with absolutely no problems and it just made me very very happy um i get just lots of things in this room it's so cute i don't show all of the clutter on camera because this video would be absolutely enormous if i did that but i just love this bedroom i think it's precious this kid really loves animals and i really want to use this house in my own gameplay Anyways, we are coming up to the end of this video now, and if you've stuck to the end, I just want to say thank you. This is a really big one and was hard to voice over for me, if you hadn't noticed. Um, if you did like it, you can leave a like and a comment to tell me what you think, and you can subscribe to my channel to see more videos from me in the future. I am trying to be more consistent with uploading, and I hope to get another video out very soon. Have a great day and I'll see you next time. Bye.